hi guys welcome back to my channel i'm juliana and today's video is going to be my march wrap up i'm going to talk about the books that i read throughout the month of march the books that i'm currently reading and at the end i'm going to talk about the movies and series that i watched so beginning with the books that i read i'm going to begin with the book of March for the challenge 12 books for 12 months of 2023 and that is Gates of Fire. I have posted a video recently um, about all about this book, so re a review video. I will, I'm going to link it in the cards and link down below so you to check it out. What I can say without repeating myself because I have a full-on video talking about only the story of this book so if you are interested please go watch it um, what I'm going to say is that this is about in a very clever way someone telling us the story of the 300 of Sparta who fought in the battle of Thermopylae against the Persian Empire so the king churches what i can say about this is that i love this book every single character in here you are going to fall in love they they have their own peculiarities their own strengths and weaknesses and every situation in here is like uh, emotional you have situations of life and death literally and you have the narrator talking about his experience living in Lacedaemonia or Sparta uh, and the trainings of the boys that will become soldiers um, or warriors some situations about a particular character in here called Rooster that he's a bastard uh, and he's not wanting to become a spartan citizen uh, we have here the mentorship between an older spartan with our narrator their conversations and then we have the battle in itself so the description of the battle and a mission that was the um, almost successful that could have end the war right there and then so it's a very well-rounded book some points and some stories are going to leave in the open during the the narration of this book uh, of this story but at the end of the book every single open point that was left uh, during the book is going to be answered so it's a, a very satisfying reading experience and i really enjoyed it and i hope you pick it up then i read the a sequel of i have here so i read the sequel of this book so this is the first book of the sequel of the i'm sorry of the I think this is going to be a trilogy. I'm not sure, but I think this is going to be a trilogy. So I have here The Magic Fix. It's the first installment. This is a fantasy, a conjunction between fantasy and humor. And this is by Mark Montanaro. So the author contacted me via Instagram and he proposed for me to do a review about the book or um, well he didn't propose for me to do a review he asked if he could send me the book and then if i could give my opinion about it so this i think this was last year or the year prior now i'm not i don't have so much memory about it but he sent me the first installment so this is from 2020 if i'm not mistaken yes 2020 the first one and then 
I read in the month of March, I read The Enchanting Tricks. That's the second installment. I'm going to leave a, the cover of the book uh, here or here uh, so you can see it. So it's very similar to the first one. And I loved it. <laughs> so I have already loved uh, the first installment. Um, I love the conjunction between... So, talking a, bit, a little bit about the plot. This world is composed, as you can see there, here, here is a map. So we have elves, trolls, ogres, humans, pixies and goblins, as you can see. And this is a realm who is very old. Um, many eras have passed and many wars have occurred between the realms. And right now, the ogres and the humans have a bit of an animosity. They are very competitive with each other. And in the first installment, we have, we accompany the realm of the humans behind the king's back, plotting a plan to make the ogres being at fault of a murderer of a murder um, and the ogres are also planning to plot against the humans but to begin a war against the humans with the other realms so it's a bit confusing and then parallel to that we have the in the realm of the pixies we have an elderly man that is a um, potion maker and he has a helper, a girl uh, called Petra and she later in the book will find out that she has ma magical powers something to do with a dragon so and so the, 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 the minister of culture I don't know a minister of the human realm sent two humans to the goblin realm in a mission. So they have to kill someone. But then when they get there, the ogres have also concocted a plan in the realms of the goblins. And so it's very confusing what happens. Many things with many plots and many concussions of plans are occurring at the same time with very different uh, objectives op opposition opposite objectives and the humans end up in prison in the realm of the goblins and the pixie so because the humans passing through in their voyage to get to the realm of the goblins end up meeting Petra and there is like a romance a bit like a spark, not a romance, a spark between um, one of the humans and Petra. And, well, what I can say is that <laughs> uh, this book is a breeze of fresh air because you will be uh, laughing all along the book because it has very silly things happening like thoughts of characters that are so innocent or so naive you know <laughs> and things that the characters do or characters say that are how can i it's a very light humor it's not sarcastic or ironic it's nothing like that it's a very light humor very silly but very well humored you know you will be a very light reading and I think this is a perfect reading experience to do between your readings. If you, for example, are reading books a bit more heavy, you, meet, you put this in the middle and you have a, a weight out of your shoulders. It's like interval, a happy interval, you know, like a light interval between those type of readings. Or if, if you are in a reading slump, reading this one is spectacular because you the, the reading will flow by itself and 
it the language is very easy you you don't be this won't extract effort from from you you know it's a very entertaining reading and so in the enchanting tricks we have the direct continuation of the magic fix uh, so we have the two humans in the prison in the realm of the goblins then we have petra with the humans after everyone in the realm discovered that she has magical powers she's with the humans and the humans now that two humans killed someone in the goblin realm a very high hierarchy killing uh, they are uh, voyaging to the realm of the goblins to uh, assure that the friendship is still there between the two realms and assure that they have nothing to do with the two humans that were there murdering and then we have the ogres also traveling to the goblin realm to uh, <laughs> persuade the goblins to uh, begin a war with the human realm so we have here many competitors, many animosities, many intrigues. So a war will, will occur, but it's going to be Petra and the two, two humans who will help the situation. Because Petra will be kidnapped by ogres, because the ogres wanted the girl. But she will be rescued by some magical goblins. And when she finds out that they also have some kind of magical powers, uh, they will, she will ask, him, ask them to uh, free the two humans because she likes them. And so that is a whole adventure that you will accompany in the reading. Uh, and when they achieve that, they basically will save humans from imminent death and they will save them they will save and end up the war at least for now and yeah and it's well the book ends up in the kind of a cliff cliffhanger so it's um we want to know what will end up happening in the end so we'll have to wait to the third installment I think it will be the last, but I'm not sure. But yes, it's very cute, very fun, very light. Um, if you like fantasy and you like humor, you have here a perfect combination. So I highly, highly advise you for you to pick this one up. And yeah, these were, these were the readings that I did throughout March. Then I'm now reading I'm not reading yet, I have to say, but I start some, uh, the first page or so, just to see what, how I'm feeling about it. So, The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy. I don't have the book here with me, it's in the other room, but I'm going to put uh, the cover of the book. Uh, so, I don't have many thoughts about it yet. So yeah, <laughs> so now about the movies that I watched, I only watched one movie and that was the Bo uh, Boston Strangler with Keira Knightley. This is from who? So the director and the writer of the movie was Matt Ruskin and this is with Keira Knightley as Loretta McLaughlin. And Carrie Coon as Jean Cole. So Loretta and Jean were journalists. They worked for a newspaper in Boston. Loretta was working in the section targeted to fashion and everything about human, uh, woman uh, style and in the as a housewife articles targeting women and stay-at-home women, you know. 
uh, but she wanted something more. She wanted to do criminal uh, reports or I'm sorry, criminal articles. So this is passing in the early 1960s an occurring murdering of older women began happening throughout uh, in those times and Loretta began to mounting the puzzle where she would notice that the women were found with a um, glass sock bow in their neck and more and more women were being uh, found out dead in that way and so she began to mount a puzzle as i was saying and she proposes to do an article about this and because maybe we were they were seeing a serial killer but her sheep didn't thought that was a good idea so she had a bit of trouble to get her boss gave her the story but she really persisted on it and she eventually she eventually began writing about it so she was interviewing interviewing policemen and interviewing neighbors who could say anything about it or she also interviewed uh, psychologists to get a, a to get a profile of this murderer but along the way the when the art, her articles began being run in the newspaper that ring some bells in the police uh, and so the chief of the police department gave a visit to the chief of Loretta and threatened uh, threatened like he he told he was not happy with the articles and that she was seducing the policeman to get the information that they she wrote in the articles and that wasn't true at all but the boss um, became to have some interest about it and he talked with the big boss of the newspaper they put Jane Cole in the scene so to be a partner with Loretta and so they both would be responsible to investigate these murderers and to write about it and so it began to be a story in itself so they began to be famous because the stories that they were uh, writing about these murderers were getting more and more known in, the, in Boston and everyone was talking about it and it was Loretta who called him the Boston Strangler so she gave a name to him or to the person they were suspecting it was a man so this is based in the real case so the Boston Strangler really existed as Loretta and Jean so they are real people I don't know if I should say more about it because I didn't know about the case so I'm not going to say if they how this ends up if they caught the guy or not because I think well you may know the case and you may have heard about the Boston Strangler I didn't so if you haven't either maybe I'm going to stay here I think I told you enough it's very thrilling um, very interesting to see this woman working together and oh and so there were imitators of the Boston Strangler in this situation so very macabre because all of the seven younger women were being killed you know and according to the psychologist that Loretta was interviewing it couldn't have happened a switch like that you know so very interesting I really enjoyed the movie I love uh, I love not I love I love Keira Knightley this is one of my favorite actresses and I really enjoyed seeing Carrie Coon as well I think her portrayal of Jean Cole was very strong I love that character as well and then at the end of the movie there is some information about the career, career choices and 
that they did after that uh, old thing with the Boston Strangler. So very interesting. Go watch it. Okay, now about the series. I didn't. I don't have any new series comparing it with the February wrap up because in the February wrap up. I talked to you about the English, a mini series of six episodes with Emily Blunt, and I told you a bit about the plot there. But I didn't start anything new, so what I did was to finish the English. And I have to say that I love that series or that mini series. So this is Emily Blunt and Shask Spencer. I already told you about the plot in the February wrap up. So if you want to know more, please go check it, the, that wrap up video. Uh, I loved it. This is, um, what can I say? Not enemies to lovers, but friends to lovers. Or not, not lovers all the way, but almost there. And there is a reason why they didn't end up to be lovers. But the love is there for sure. The villain of this uh, mini series is really. Let me search for an adjective. Disgusting. <laughs> Loathsome, revolting. Yes. So he, you will have um, how the way we say it here in Portugal is ódio de estimação, that in a literal translation would be a pet hate, like, like um, a hate that is there with you all the way, because he, he does revolting things and he's really a ascaros or a, a disgusting person. Uh, but at the end there will be vengeance, but he's going to be a sour taste ending because our protagonist portrayed by Emily Blunt well is doomed for life and I'm not going to say why because that is part of the spoiler of the miniseries but when she goes to America she is already doomed but it's a very beautiful story of course, you would like to see another type of ending, but that is part of the charm of this series. And it's very quick to watch and you will enjoy it very much. If you are if you have tastes similar like mine, for if you have accompanied my wrap-ups where I talk about movies and series, you can more or less have a notion uh, of my tastes so and you know I like romance but I like romance that's a bit more intricate it's not that lovely dovey and fast how how do you say it quick no how do you say it quick passion or I don't like anything that's easy and very quick without a build-up you know so and I like sad endings as well. And this case is something like that. So I really advise you to go and watch it. Emily Blunt is also one of my favorite actresses. So I love to see her and she's great in this. As is uh, Shask Spencer. And yeah, go watch it. So that's all I have to say to you today. Uh, yeah. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. Don't forget to press the ring bell button to all so you can receive all my notifications. Leave a like, it helps a lot the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel. Follow me on Instagram, I'll be posting there whenever I have a good review to do or anything else. And that's it for now, I see you on the next one. Bye!